My name is Renee Robertson, and I'm the host and creator of the true crime podcast, Missing in the Carolinas. Today, for five minutes of true crime, I'd like to bring you a case from my home state in North Carolina, the mystery of the boy under the billboard. A word of caution though, this segment contains details of graphic violence, so watch at your own discretion. It was a mystery that perplexed investigators in Orange County, North Carolina for years. In September of 1998, a grass-cutting crew discovered skeletal remains under a billboard off Interstate 85 in Mebane. The clothing found with the remains offered clues that the body belonged to that of a young boy who had not yet reached puberty. He had dark, straight brown hair and was initially thought to have been Hispanic and possibly a migrant worker. For years, his identity remained a mystery. Thanks to the dogged determination of an Orange County Sheriff's investigator named Tim Horn, the boy, Robert Bobby Adam Witt, has finally been identified and his murderer brought to justice. In January of 2020, the boy's father, John Russell Witt, now age 58, pleaded guilty to the boy's murder. It was a conviction more than 20 years in the making. Bobby Witt was never reported missing which led to the difficulty in identifying him as the victim. In 2011, using the boy's skull and DNA results from Parbon Nano Labs, Inc., a forensic sculptor created a three-dimensional bust of what the boy must have looked like, but still no one came forward with any information. In 2018, genealogist Dr. Barbara Ray Venter, a genetic genealogy consultant who had also been involved in the Golden State Killer case, got involved. She showed investigators that the unidentified boy from North Carolina was a first-generation child of Asian and white parents. Searching the Ancestry DNA databases, she located a possible first cousin of the child's living in Hawaii. They traced the boy to a family members in Ohio who said they believed their cousin Bobby Witt had moved back to South Korea with his mother. This led Horn to wonder if Bobby's mother had also been murdered. After more digging, a tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children helped him locate the information about an unidentified Asian woman found in Spartanburg the same year the boy's body had been found in 1998. She had been bound and strangled. A DNA comparison confirmed the boy and the woman, Young Wa Cho, were biologically related. Further DNA investigation led to John Witt as the boy's father. Witt had met Myung while serving in the Air Force in South Korea. They married and she moved to the United States with him, living first in Ohio, where she gave birth to Bobby. When Bobby was 10, the family moved to Concord, North Carolina. Witt told investigators he began having an extramarital affair and decided to murder 44-year-old Myung in order to be with his mistress. He then drove her body to South Carolina to dispose of it. He moved his mistress into his home, but she didn't get along with Bobby, so he made the decision to take the boy for a drive one day and murdered him by strangulation. Witt had told his mistress that his wife had gone back to South Korea, so after he murdered Bobby and left his body in Mebane, he reported the boy had gotten on a plane to join his mother. Witt was arrested for several armed robberies in 1999 and has been in federal prison ever since. He pled guilty to two counts of second degree murder and concealing a death. He told the court he was haunted by the murders and had even tried to commit suicide in prison in 2001. He was transferred from Kentucky to a federal prison in Butner to complete his federal sentence before being moved into North Carolina's state prison system. His sister, who was still living in Ohio at the time, was shocked when she received the news of Bobby and Myung's deaths. Witt had told her the two went back to South Korea, and she never had any reason to suspect they were deceased or that her own brother could have been capable of such senseless violence. This brings us to the conclusion of this week's Five Minutes of True Crime. Please follow us at Missing in the Carolinas on Instagram and check out our podcast of the same name, 
wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thank you so much for watching.